close your eyes and watch your breath coming in, going out. Try some long breathing for a while, see how long breathing feels. And if long breathing feels good, keep it up. If it doesn't feel good, you can change. You could try shorter breathing, faster, slower, heavier, lighter, more shallow. See what kind of breathing feels good for you right now. Try different kinds of breathing, experiment for a bit, and then read the results of your experiment. This is how you develop insight, this is how you develop discernment. By doing something and then looking at the results, and then learning how to judge the results as to whether they're good or not. The basic principle for discernment in the Buddhist teachings is sometimes thought to be very abstract. They're talking about emptiness, dependent core arising, not self. But when the Buddha talked about how discernment begins, he said it begins with a simple question. What when I do it will lead to my long-term welfare and happiness? What when I do it will lead to my long-term suffering? So you've got to look for the long term. You have to know how to look at the results of your actions. And anybody can go for a quick fix. But to see the long term results of your actions takes using your powers of observation and looking at your actions. Because those are the things that shape your life. We're not just passively watching a TV show or playing an interactive game here. Right? The choices that we make will change the game. We can read about this, we can think about this. As Buddha said, there are three kinds of discernment. There's the discernment that comes from listening. When you hear something, you, it makes sense. The discernment that comes from thinking, you take what you've listened to and you think it through. But the kind of discernment that really gives you real knowledge is the discernment that comes from the practice. When you actually put what you've learned into practice and see what results you get. And then you have to make adjustments. Because sometimes maybe you misunderstood things. And sometimes your powers of judgment are not that good, but if you do this again and again and again, thinking about the long-term results of your actions, you begin to see that there are certain actions that you just don't want to do. The Buddha gives you some help. This is why we have the precepts. He says, just don't go there. But there are other areas of life where you have to learn how to use your own discernment to figure out what's the right thing to do. And you learn that through trial and error, and trial and error, and then trial and success. You learn how to judge your actions by their long-term consequences. And that's when you can said to be really discerning. This is one of the perfections that the Buddha himself developed. How did he do? gain his discernment? Through trial and error. He made a number of mistakes, but then he learned how to learn from his mistakes, so as not to repeat them. And again, he was looking for the long-term consequences. Even when they taught him very refined levels of concentration, he realized, okay, in the long term these are going to fall apart. I've got to find something better. And it was his quest to keep on finding something better that led him to the ultimate. If he'd contented himself with only second best, we never would have had a Buddha. It's because he wanted to perfect his actions, perfect the skill of his actions through acting and then reflecting, acting and then reflecting, and then making adjustments. That's how he became the Buddha, and that's how he learned the Dharma that he came out to teach us and has been teaching the world ever since, over 2,600 years now. So that's how the Buddha learned. And he set an example for us. We don't just copy his knowledge. We don't just listen and think about it. We actually take the lessons he learned and put them into practice ourselves to see if we can get the same results. That's how the knowledge becomes ours, and that's how the discernment becomes ours and not just borrowed goods.